Hello my lovely sewing friends, it's Catherine and I'm back as promised with an outerwear sewing collection um, and I just want to say hello my lovely sewing friends and ladies out there um, thank you for following but also thank you for the comments you do leave and um, it really helps to inspire me to look at this in a different way um, and the uh, and the lovely comments you make about um, just the clothes I wear, the fabrics I choose, which, you know, I have two hobbies. One is sewing, one is buying fabric. Um, and I know some of you want me to do um, a little bit about my fabric collection. Well, I honestly wouldn't know where to start, but I will start to think about that one and to see how I can best do that. So I'm here today wearing a coat that I made last year, cut it out in the spring. I got this fabric, which is a baby needle cord and it's very fine. I don't even know, you might be able to see the, the whales there. It's what is called a baby cord um, and I know some of you will look at this and think with horror oh my god you know that is busy but I've always wanted um, to make a coat like this very bright very vibrant and um, anyway I've done it this is a buttrick pattern I can't find the pattern I've no idea what I've done with it I haven't thrown it away but it's somewhere um, but I will look and put it at the end and I'll put a little clip of me in the full length um, wearing of this as well so you can see. It, it's actually a three quarter length and it's got inseam pockets that are hidden away, um, just normal sleeves um, and they were one piece sleeve even though I usually try and pick a two piece sleeve because I just think there's a lot more opportunity for fitting it right. I um, I did interface or uh, use tailoring um, uh, product to interline it because I wanted it to have some body, a little bit of body, because you can probably see it's got pleats in it, um, which give it a lovely shaping, actually. I do think um, I should have probably just gone down a size but I did want it so that I could wear it any time of year, not just in the spring, and to wear perhaps a couple of other layers under it. So, um, you know, I can live with that. It's uh, really what I call springtime in a coat. And so I, I love it. Um, I've worn it once and I will wear it more now. The weather's probably not so cold. Um, and I've got some great lining that I had already in my lining box because if I see lining I'll pick it up um, not with a project in mind but um, with a view that I'll, I'll use it at some time or other. Now I don't know whether you can see that this is a really high quality lining fabric and I got this from Boys for three pound a metre. And this is what I've seen in gentlemen's tailoring. And you'll probably see it in things that like Hobbs um, ladies wear. So it's got a lot of uh, movement, but it also has some body. And that's what I wanted for this coat. Um, it took me a while to think about how to um, how to as I said, interline it. So I did hand sew because you've got seam lines down the front as well. Um, and I did hand sew quite a bit of it in and I did make my own sleeve head so that it gave it, again, some structure. But I think this, um, this will stay with me forever. And it was one of those coats that I don't know whether you've seen like, um, Joe Brown's, it's, um, I think it's an online um, uh, retailer who do men's and women's clothes. 
but uh, I've bought a coat from there a long, long time ago, and they have unusual, sometimes very embellished coats. That's the kind of thing I like. I've got loads of coats, I must say, but I like making outwear, but I also like wearing it too. So this, um, I feel, is a long-awaited project, but I'm happy now it's done. And um, I'll move on to the next garment. Number two, this is a Pauline Alice sewing pattern. First time I've used one of her patterns and this is called the Nino jacket and it is full of bits and pieces that I love. So that's the, um, the art drawing as you can see there, again comes in two lengths. One is mid thigh and the other is this one. I'm just gonna move the camera back just to see if you can get an idea. Yeah, so it's waistline level on me. I'm gonna break you forwards again. Excuse the technical movements. Um, it has a what I call a true Peter Pan colour, and at the back, and again, I'll I'll put another video with me walking in it. You will see there's a tab where there's a back pleat and two buttons to hold it in place. The cuffs round the sleeve um, have little tabs too and buttons. And there are, I don't know whether you can see that, um, well pockets, um, which actually I was so pleased with. I really was. Um, you can see that we're matching up and yeah, very, very pleased. Now this fabric, I bought this to make this jacket as a toile and those who know me will say, what? You never ever do that. Um, because I've got some navy wool that I want to make for next year. Um, but this fabric I got from, again, good old boys, something like seven pounds a metre. And I just bought two metres, which I wouldn't really have done, but I needed just that little bit of... Uh, extra for the pattern matching. Again, I um, I use my tailoring, um, interlining and interfacing, and I double interface the collar. Um, the under collar is cut on the bias, when that's really important when you're doing a coat, I think, because it gives it some stretch. Whereas if you cut the two collars, on the fold or um, on, the, on the grain line, you get no movement at all. And I, I just think the collar sits much better if you do the under collar on uh, a bias. That's the way I was taught to do it anyway. Um, what else can I tell you? Let me show you the inside because that looks quite nice too. Um, it's fully lined. As you can see, uh, again, this was some um, bargain fabric uh, lining. I think I got this from Barry's in Birmingham. Uh, it's got a lovely shimmer on it, as you can see. And this is proper tailoring um, lining as well. I mean, it's great if you want to use viscose or a really pretty one for the inside. However, um, if you're making a coat, I think it's well worth investing in good lining material as well. Um, and I love 
the fact that I've got a proper in inside um, attention to detail really with the facing. The way that she instructs you to do um, hand sew the hem is great um, because I, I actually tacked it down um, because what I didn't want was the fabric to pull um, and occasionally um, when I've left it as a loose lining it, it shows up as pulling. Um, I also um, tacked in, which is another area I always do, the pocket area, I part sewed the lining um, so when it's not been bagged out properly um, I'll sew it probably just about a quarter or a third of the way up on the sleeve there and then when I put the sleeve head in which I've done there as well I will stitch the fabric the wrong side of the fabric onto the sleeve head so again that stabilizes it and it doesn't move the other thing that I always do is I put uh, interfacing or interlining along the cuff. Now, um, any of you that have made skirts or trousers and you see you buy the interfacing for those uh, projects, I tend to use that here because you've, you've got the ability to crease and fold and it sits nicely along the edge. Um, so that's another little tip if you're doing that. Um, I got the buttons which I thought were as good a match. I'm not 100% but you know I'm not going to change them now. Um, and actually my husband said when he saw this that he really liked it and he thought that it was um, suited to me. So that's his way of saying he likes it. So that is, oh, that was just a label. I'm not even sure where I got that, but I stitched the K in, uh, K for Catherine. So that's the Pauline Alice Nino jacket. Um, I made, well, I'm just gonna check so that I can tell you without lying. I did make, A size I think 42 um, I didn't want it over big yes I made a size 42 um, because it was a jacket and I want to wear it with some high waist trousers that I'll be making soon um, but I think it sits perfectly. I've got some brown um, twill that I'm going to make some high-waisted trousers from. And um, yeah, I think it, it was a success. Um, it's not for the faint-hearted only because you've got, as you can see, a lot of pieces. Um, but if you've, if you've sewn and made a blouse, then a jacket shouldn't be any more difficult really and um, because it's an outerwear garment I think it's quite forgiving that you can have perhaps a little bit um, of a bigger item because you want to put things under it so the fitting isn't as tricky as some of uh, perhaps um, a fitted blouse or a dress so there we are the Nino jacket. Now, last piece I want to show you is this. Love this. And this, I got some, again, let me just see if you can see that. Yeah. So, this is um, for the eagle eyed amongst you nanny iro fabric and just look at that it's a deep teal it's got these white 
um, floral accents, but in the centre, I don't know, can you see there's a tiny bit of red? And um, as soon as I saw this on the uh, Draper's Daughters website, straight away um, I knew I was going to make this with it. Um, if you haven't visited Karen's website online shop, do because she has some fantastic um, high quality fabric and as I say I love Nano Eerie fabric um, and this is this is uh, uh, quilted already so the backing's on so it was such a quick easy sew and I knew that this would be great for me to wear when I'm upstairs when I'm um, and more like a cardigan really but it's just got that little bit of uh, padding in it i had this pattern from bird of style and i think it was back in 21 um so what i did was i modified it to make a short length jacket i was not aiming to put buttons on it because I wanted it to come edge to edge and um, that pattern actually is instructing you how to make your own quilted fabric to use um, to make the, the jacket in. So I knew what I wanted to do was um, put some bias binding on the edge now this is some um, cotton lawn I had left over from um, a plain Liberty fabric. I made a blouse or I made something for my nephew's little girl um, and I'd got enough, I think I've got a quarter of a yard left. So I got out my new Simplicity bias trim maker and made this, I think I made around about six metres. And the reason I'm saying that is because inside, you've probably already seen a peak view, I wanted to Hong Kong seam it. So you can see I did all the inside across there. And so you don't have to use your overlocker for anything on a garment like this. I bought a 70 centimeter piece of this fabric and I think the other was 60 centimeters so what's that a meter and 30 um, and I know I was taking a chance because I didn't know where the if you like the one piece finished and then the next piece joined but you can't see, I actually physically joined them together to make cutting out easier. And I don't think you can see on here where that join is. Um, I know where it is, but you don't. Um, so that's just an idea for you. If you see like a couple of pieces and um, you know that you could probably if you had a meter and a half make something just have a go with it you know this i think cost me 19 pounds and and it isn't i mean it's ridiculous the amount it costs to buy it per meter when it's new and and i have done don't um don't get me wrong but um when i saw this i thought God, i've been waiting for this and i'm gonna do it now then let me just show you there. I had managed to line it up um, and I love it. I also thought actually wouldn't this make a great kind of bed jacket and this is getting back to the uh, sewing over 60. Um, in the daytime with some pyjama bottoms on or something I, I just think um, it's fabulous. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. I'm not going to say what I'm doing next because I haven't made my mind up, but I will be back and I will be sharing more of my sewing, perhaps some of my fabric and a couple of new patterns that I've purchased lately. So 
keep sewing, keep well and be kind and I'm sending my love to you all. Bye.